Hi guys, you here from Blender Bros and in this video we're gonna be doing two things. One of them we're gonna be adjusting some settings in preferences to improve our experience in Blender and also I'm gonna show you how to add add-ons to Blender and we're gonna be using Blender native add-ons for this which will make our life much easier. So first of all let's go to edit and let's go to preferences. And this is the menu we've been using in the first video when I showed you how to increase the resolution scale of this uh, UI. But there are other settings here in this menu we're going to talk about that we can change and they're quite useful. Okay, So as you remember, we disabled the splash screen and we changed the resolution on the interface. So that would do us here. And then let's go to themes. So if you go here to this option 3D viewport, we can change a few settings. So let's click here and shift A and let's add a cube. And you can see now, if you zoom in, that the cube outline has a specific color. So here we can change a few things with this object selected. We can, for example, change the color of an active object to a different color, like for example, white. I prefer it. It's a bit easier on the eyes and for me, it's easier to see, okay? The same with object selected, I wanted the same color, so I'm gonna go here and make it white. Then, then again, if you, for example, go to edit mode with tab and you're gonna press, let's say two for edges. So now if I'm going to press A to select all the edges, you see that they also have kind of like a warm color. I want them to be white as well, so I can change it, okay? Now the face select, uh, so let's press three here and A to select everything. And you have face selected here. We could change it to some something a bit more interesting, like for example, a bit bluish. And then when you select an edge or whatever, you can really clearly see that difference, right? So let's go to two for edge, one for vert. Now verts are really, really tiny and it's difficult to see them. So if you scroll all the way down here, you can change the size of, you know, all these elements here like for example vertex size i usually use seven because it makes it a bit bigger and easy to see the same with object origin size i would make it bigger make it seven so it's easy to see let's scroll up here and change the vertex color also to white so it's consistent okay another thing that i want to change is the face orientation do you remember when we went to this menu here on the top right let me just move this here and we enabled face orientation Okay, normally when you have blue faces, okay, you don't really need to know that information because they are correct. All you need to know is when they flipped. So when I click on an object, press tab, then I'm going to press three for faces, select that face, then alt N and flip it. All I really need to know is where is the red face. So when you click on this here and reduce the alpha on this to zero, you will literally um, go back to the original color of the user interface, which is gray, and all you'll be able to see is the incorrect faces on your mesh. So it's going to be simply easier on the eyes. I prefer to work like this, okay? Select everything in face mode, Alt N, and recalculate outside. Press Tab to go to object mode, and let's go back here. Now let's go to viewport. In viewport, um, we're quite fine. If you have a really powerful machine, you could, you know, change the uh, viewport quality to something a bit better. The same with textures, you know, but that really depends on uh, on the machine. And then here under lights, I would keep it as, as is. Editing, I don't really want to touch that. Animation, I don't really care. Add-ons, that's important. Now we're going to be enable certain Blender native add-ons here that will enable us to do th certain things. Like, for example, add-on called Bull Tool will enable us to use shortcuts to create cuts and other types of bullions on our mesh, which makes it a bit more easy and much faster to work with. There's another add-on called Edit Mesh Tools, uh, which is here. This will allow us to um, manipulate with edges, create offsets, uh, um, fillets, etc. Really interesting add-on. Then there's another one called Loop Tools, which is very important for working with loops and um, closing, for example, gaps and bridging um, geometry with faces. Really useful add-on. Another one is very useful for working with materials called Node Wrangler. We're going to be using it as well. 
Then we have a very useful add-on called 3D Print Toolbox, which will allow us to clean mesh very easily with one click, where we have some kind of a non-manifold geo, so it means geometry that is basically incorrect uh, or simply unnecessary. Then we have F2 add-on that actually is interesting for working with, with faces and closing certain areas by adding faces to the mesh very easily. That's a really cool add-on. Another add-on that's really important, it's a copy attributes menu. That's really cool. You can, for example, copy modifiers from one object to another with a single click, which is great. So this is kind of like a default Blender settings whenever I start a new Blender. You know, when I download Blender and install it, these are settings I'm actually changing uh, on the first day, okay? Then input here, um, this is fine. Navigation, that's really important. What you want to do is first of all turn off auto perspective. What it does, it switches between perspective and orthographic view when you switch modes from object to edit mode. And it's really irritating. We're going to be talking about it during the modeling section, but at the moment simply switch it off and I actually prefer to stay in the same mode. So for example, if you see here um, um, in perspective mode, okay, and if I press number 5, I'm in orthographic view. This is kind of like a 2D projection in a 3D view, okay, so that's perspective, that's orthographic, and the shortcut is number 5. I would suggest you map it to your mouse because you're going to be using this a lot. It's very useful for aligning stuff and, for example, running booleans. And this auto perspective, it will switch every time to perspective mode when you switch modes. It's really annoying. Orbit around selection is really essential because whenever you have something selected and you're going to rotate it, you want to orbit around that selected object. If you have multiple objects selected, like I'm going to shift D all of them, press A, I'm going to be orbiting around the bounding box of all these three objects. This is really useful. The default Blender behavior is extremely confusing, so I don't want that. Let's just Alt G that to move it back. Now here, depth is really important too. When you scroll in into object without this enabled, you may eventually find yourself struggling. Uh, and you see that like Blender slows down. I keep on scrolling and Blender does nothing. This is really irritating. If you turn it on, you have no problem. You can scroll in and out without any slowdowns. So these options are essential for, um, you know, for your sanity, basically, okay? Key map. Now, remember we switched spacebar from play to search. That was the first splash screen uh, that we've seen on Bl in Blender. And, you know, you can always switch it back here. And also you can switch the uh, selection from left to right mouse button. I would never touch it because, you know, that's really cool. So here on the system, first of all, we're going to do is uh, just type any number here. And by default, the max is going to be 256. These are undo steps, and these are really important. It's up to you how many you're going to have. It's, it depends on your memory. Um, I'm running 64 gigs, so, you know, I really don't care. I want as many undo steps as possible, because that saved my ass many times. Here under CUDA, these are your render settings, okay? You do not want to select both. I mean, the um, processor and the card. Regardless of how strong your processor is, card usually going to be stronger and faster. So if you select this and then you go to render settings and under cycles, select GPU compute, you're going to be fine. Optics is a, a much faster engine, but I found that many times, you know, there were a lot of errors with rendering. And quite frankly, um, I don't really you know, see a point of this. I'm rendering with CUDA settings. Besides, I will show you really awesome settings for compositing and denoising, which will shorten the render times by a few times, okay? So, you know, you could try optics, it's very fast, but like I said, sometimes it doesn't work, especially I've noticed that I have problems with rendering when I'm using decals with decal machine, but that's more advanced stuff, so don't worry about it at the moment. Just set it to NVIDIA and, you know, CUDA and you're going to be good. Undo steps are really important. So if you can afford, you you know, to um, beef this up to the max, that's great. If not, set it to like 50 or 100, you should be fine, okay? Save and load. I don't really care about that. To be honest, I, I'm not bothering with this. So this would conclude setting preferences. And I'm going to save preferences and close it. Delete that cube. 
and go here to file default save startup file and we're done and this will also include the setting here uh, that we changed on the cycles next thing we're going to set the cycles render engine so like i said cycles gpu compute important then here samples i would set to 100 250 you could set to 300 but i think 250 will do maximum samples uh, you know 250 that will do we don't need the noise we can turn it off and then let's scroll down let's go to light path and switch it to i would say six six and six and six this will do you could go with eight here to be honest as well or you could go with twelve eight 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 so you know this would also work um, if you're gonna be ever using volumetrics you will need to enable this but don't worry about it it's more advanced stuff keep these on um, then let's go to performance and here I would recommend you to set it to 256 at start but I'm gonna be rendering 2048 this is a size of a tile okay so size of a, a resolution of a tile that blender will render at once um, when you're gonna be rendering an image which means at this setting the size of a rendering tile is going to be 2k so 2048 by 2048 at 256 is going to be a bit smaller so you're going to be rendering smaller squares it depends on the card and the system basically so you need to play with this try 256 512 124 248 okay if you have a card something like around gtx 1080 you should be fine as 10 10 24 if you have something like rtx 380 or higher 2048 should be fine so this would cover all these settings here we can collapse them so it's nice and clean we can switch to ev i can show you high quality settings in ev i would go here to 256 uh, viewport render 64 but stay with 16 if your machine you know cannot handle it enable bloom ambient occlusion uh, default settings are fine then we're gonna go screen space refraction turn that off and turn that on um, then we have volumetrics we don't need it but if you do need volumetrics the lower number here the better quality of the volumetrics and you definitely want volumetric shadows okay it's going to be a better quality performance here high quality normals these are super high settings guys by the way okay so bear in mind i have a beefed up rig so you know 2k here is enough you don't really have to go with four i would turn that on and other than that we good so this would be EV settings. Let's go back to cycles because I want this to be my default engine. Let's go back now to compositing and I will show you how to set up a compositor. This is really important because we're going to be using denoising in our renders for cycles with this compositor. So click here to use nodes and click on that node here, press G and move it in here. Okay. And now we're going to go to this tab. And we're going to enable denoising data, which will enable these three nodes. Click here, press Shift A, and here type noise and check the noise. Click it in here, then connect these two. So normal to normal, albedo to albedo. And we're going to add one more node, but I'm not going to plug it in. Shift A and type GLA and put it in here. Now this is for creating bloom in cycles, because in cycles you don't really have bloom. In Eevee you can simply, you know, just click that on and you're going to have bloom. Kind of like a amplification of lights in your render, basically. In cycles you need to use this node. Now this node we need to do a few changes here. We need to change from streaks to fog low and from medium to high. And this is really high settings. And if you want to use it, you simply pop it in here like this, okay? If you want to disconnect it, hold control and the right mouse button and drag it through these nodes. Move it in here and connect these two. I'm going to leave it as default, okay? I don't need that, so I'm going to collapse it, okay? Boom. Right? So that's compositing. Let's go back to layout. And then we're going to drag a window out like this, okay? So click here and drag it out. We're gonna go to shader editor right shader editor we're gonna go to world 
and you'll see two nodes okay these are nodes now because we installed add-on called node wrangler we're gonna click this one use a shortcut Control t and click this here and move it this was create a node tree uh, needed for adding an hdri image to our blender hdri image is basically used for lighting it's a 360 uh, degrees image that you can rotate okay and use for lighting we're gonna load one in you need to download it from internet go to a page like for example polyheaven.com and you can download an image from there they called hdri images okay the suffix of this image is dot hdr and you can download abandoned slip away it's a very flat lighting meaning there's no harsh highlights it's fantastic basic sort of a lighting for most of your renders or really good one for setting setting materials because there are no harsh reflections so simply go to polyheaven.com type abandoned slip away and download it i can actually show you how to do this okay so if you go to your internet and type uh, polyheaven slip away and just simply click that and you see that's the image and all you need to do is go here and select 4k and download it right once you download it simply install it the way i do it here click it and open image and it will gonna get added here so now watch if i collapse this right here collapse this i'm gonna press shift a and add a cube i'm gonna go here to materials I'm going to add a mat. I'm going to make it a bit darker and I'm going to change it here to metallic, right? Now, if I switch to render view, you will see that we have in the background. So if I press my middle mouse button and rotate, you can see that there is a actually real lighting in your environment. And now watch this. We can click here and drag it out. We can go here to shade editor. We can change it to world, zoom in, then we can click here and we can rotate it around to change the angle of lighting, okay? The reason why I told you that EV is used for previews is because when you switch here to EV, okay, the lighting is going to be a bit different, but the rotation is going to be much faster and smoother because the feedback is instant, okay? Now let's reset it to zero. If you want to disable visibility of this render in viewport when you're rendering what you need to do is go here to film and click on transparent uh, and that's that guys let's go back to our regular view let's delete that cube let's collapse this menu right let's set our scene the way we want it the last thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn my cavity on because i forgot to actually turn it on and with these settings i'm happy to save it so i'm gonna go here to defaults and one more time save my startup file every time now you're going to open blender you're gonna see these settings you don't have to do this again also let's say you have some kind of a scene in blender let me just shift d that to duplicate it and you want to reset your scene to the default scene right let's say you get some windows here open as well like this like this right you got some different you know i don't know some different workspaces open in here etc right and you now reset it to your default scene without closing blender the only thing you need to do is go here new and general and don't save boom and your blender is gonna reset to the saved preferences that we just you know saved a few seconds ago okay so again all the settings of compositor uh, all the settings of cycles all the things we changed on the preferences here everything is saved all our add-ons as well so if i go to for example add-ons here right and i'm going to enabled only you will see that we have 3d print toolbox we have our f2 loop tools pull tool etc so everything is the way we set it up each time you open your blender so now we are ready to start modeling guys and in next video we're going to start creating some really cool stuff we're going to learn how to uh, use blender in practice to create something really awesome thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video